focusing on the breath, evaluating the breath, so that you get on good terms with it. And John Lee calls this concentration work. And there's work that's involved. You have to figure things out. How to get your mind to stay with the breath, and exactly what to do with the breath. How do you adjust the breath in a way that's comfortable, that allows it to be comfortable? It's possible to squeeze it and stretch it and do all kinds of things and make it miserable. But how do you adjust it in a way that makes it actually better? So that the mind can permeate into the breath, the breath can permeate into the mind. So there's no sense of be, uh, boundary between the two of them. In other words, your body is willing to have you be aware of it, and it's not going to freeze up when you focus your awareness on it. And your mind is willing to let the body come in. It's willing to be very, very sensitive to it. Now, some people find that it's easier for, to do this, and others find that it's hard. But whether it's easy or hard is not the matter. It's something you've got to do if you want the mind to be able to settle down in a way that's solid and secure. So if it's hard, try to figure out why is it hard. After all, it is your body and it is your breath. The breath is the force of life. It's what keeps everything going together here. You can do without food for a while. You can do without sleep for a while. But you can't go very long without breathing, because the breath is the force that keeps the body here all together and functioning. It should be comfortable. It should be easy. And if it's not, ask yourself, what's getting in the way? Ask yourself which parts of the body are hungry for breath energy, and what can you do to give the energy to them? How do you recognize that hunger? Well, you experiment. Take some good long, deep in and out breaths. Allow the whole torso to be ventilated by the breath, nourished by the breath. And see if you can notice which parts have suddenly feel like they're getting a special jolt of nourishment that they didn't have before. That should give you a, a lesson, okay, something that's missing from your ordinary way of breathing. And then feed that part of the body as much as it wants. After a while, it'll, it'll have enough. And then check around and see if there's anything else that seems to be starved. The main areas that get starved are the areas around the heart, around the throat. Those are the central areas of the breath. In Thai, they actually make a phrase out of them, your heart and your throat, as relating to your mood. And this is where your emotions are often most felt in the body. And you may find some strong emotions coming up as you explore this part. Well, just allow the breath to dissolve them away. You don't have to get involved. You're here to nourish these parts of the body. Let everything else go. We're aiming at a good, strong sense of well-being, pleasure, bliss, rapture. The word in Pali is sukha. It has a very wide range of meanings, everything from just plain old ease to very strong bliss. And the more you can appreciate, as the Buddha says, settle in and indulge in the pleasure, the concentration, the more you'll be able to get out of it. I don't know how many times I've seen books on meditation, and when they start mentioning jhana or concentration, the first thing is to warn you about the dangers of it. Watch out, you're going to get stuck, and you want to get past this so you can get onto insight, they say. The Buddha never said that. He said, and if you don't have this kind of pleasure to tap into, there's no way you're going to be able to get past your attachment to sensuality. He says, no matter how much you see the drawbacks of sensuality, you keep coming back. Because the mind needs pleasure. It feeds off of pleasure. And if it's not going to get it from the breath, it's not going to get it from the meditation, it's going to go looking in the garbage, it's going to go dumpster diving. 
any place where it can find just a little bit of pleasure, its little hit. The thing is, all too often as we're breathing, we tend to treat the very sensitive parts of the body roughly. And as a result, they, they don't get much pleasure out of the breath. So you've got to become a real connoisseur, try to be as sensitive as possible to what the sensitive parts of your body, again, mostly in the throat and the heart. But other people may find they have other areas. But these are the parts that really need to be nourished. And you can breathe energy through them, but if it's not just right, they get very picky and they kind of freeze up. So you try to get to know what they want, try to figure them out, as in the, the Buddhist example of the cook. The cook works for a king or a king's minister, and the minister doesn't say, I like this or I like that. It's up to the cook to observe and go, what is the king like? What is the king's minister like? What does he reach for? And then you get a sense, okay, this is the kind of food he likes, then you make more of that. So it's not that you're just going to move in and impose your ideas of what's going to be comfortable on the body. You have to learn how to listen to the body, see how it responds. When the breath is heavy, there are some kinds of heavy breathing that can feel really nourishing and very, very satisfying. Other times they feel gross. So what does your body need right now? When you find something that feels really good, stick with it until it doesn't feel good anymore. And that may be a long time. And you may be afraid, are you going to get stuck on the concentration? If you're not stuck on the concentration, there's no way you're going to be able to do it well. There's healthy attachment to concentration and unhealthy. The unhealthy is when you want to go off and don't want to see anybody and just don't want to deal with the human race anymore. Forgetting, of course, that you're a member of the human race, and a lot of the issues that you're running away from are things that actually have to be dealt with. But a healthy attachment to concentration is that you want to stick with it as you're working through the day, you want to stick with it as you're dealing with people, you want to stick with it whatever comes up, whatever your duties are, whatever your responsibilities, whatever your activities. You want to bring the sense of really being nourished. Once you've found your really sensitive spot, the spot that is very picky but is, really responds well when the breath is feeling good, try to stay there as you go through the day. If you're doing walking meditation, make that your center. And try to be really sensitive to that spot. This means you can carry a sense of well-being into every place you go, everywhere you go, every activity you get engaged in. And it's free, and nobody has to know about it. As John Lee once said, the things that nobody else knows about, those are the ones that are safe. It's just a matter of you are doing the work, trying to get sensitive to what the body needs, what your mind needs sitting as you're sitting here, so you can really settle in the body, you can really settle into the breath. You can indulge in this sense of well-being, rapture, pleasure, bliss. If you find parts of the body or parts of the mind are resistant, okay, ask, what's putting up the resistance? Don't push things too hard, just pose that question. And then work around whatever the resistance is. Some parts of the body and the mind take a while to respond. They don't trust you, they don't, they don't trust each other. They feel threatened by each other. But if you can be patient, it's like training a wild animal. You have to be very, very patient and very indirect. But ultimately it pays off. The big ice dam in your heart will suddenly melt. So 
then you realize that the breath can really be very satisfying, very gratifying. And you can tap into it when you need it. So that when you're tempted to go for, again, for your dumpster diving in terms of your pleasures, and you say, I've got this, this is so much better. Why bother? Sometimes your old pleasures, it's just out of force of habit. The mind has built up these stories about the old pleasures. But you have to learn how to question those stories. To what extent did those pleasures really give you satisfaction? And where are they now? Where's the pleasure of the breath? Once you can tap into it, once you appreciate it, once you cultivate it, it's here all the time. And it doesn't have the drawbacks of all the sensual pleasures that we tend to run around and make fools of ourselves over. So find your sensitive spots, and you be sensitive to them, so you can provide strong energy when they need it, gentle energy when they want it. The more attention you give to this, the greater the rewards are going to be. And this becomes the pleasure that is your food as you go along the path. It gives you the strength to keep on going.